I've gotten a ton of questions on what is the new, you know, quote unquote, best Mac computer for the home office. Is it the brand new MacBook Pro 14 with its smaller laptop body, new processor and tons of ports, or is it the venerable M1 Mac mini with its even smaller body, slightly more versatile ports and almost a third of the price? I mean, that seems like a pretty rough competition, but in the end, one is going to have to be the winner, right? So while these two computers are both pretty exciting, which one comes out on top? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Whew. Back at it with a home office sort of video. I don't mean to brag everyone, but after almost two years of exclusively working from home, I feel like this is my wheelhouse. This is my particular sport ball game that I definitely watch and understand all the rules of with all the ice and all that. Obviously the MacBook Pro will edge out the Mac Mini in a few specific use cases that we'll get into here shortly. But I want to start by putting all of my cards on the table. Yes, if you didn't know, the MacBook Pro is a laptop. If you need a laptop for any reason, it will clearly outperform the Mac Mini. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad that we got that out of the way in case there was any confusion uh, in the video. And as it's been a while since we've talked about the M1 Mac Mini, let's quickly refresh ourselves on the specs and options as we start to compare it to the much newer and potentially meaner? I don't actually know the temperament of my laptops, actually. The MacBook Pro 14. The M1 Mac Mini comes in at the lowest base model price of any Mac computer. You can get that lowest end 8 core M1 processor, 8 core GPU, 8 gigabytes of unified memory, or as we in the industry call it, the Triple Eight machine. Yeah, okay, nobody actually calls it that. You get that computer with the 256 gigabyte solid state drive for $699 brand new from Apple, $649 brand new from Amazon, or even $589 refurbished from Apple. That $589 price is wild, and it's hands down the best value in all of computerdom, even with these high-end MacBooks on the market. You can add a few things to this. You can add eight gigabytes of unified memory and a two terabyte solid state drive, bringing the little computer's price tag up to $1699 or $1799 with a 10 gigabit ethernet port. The MacBook Pro 14, is slightly more expensive. Its base model will come in at $300 over that higher end Mac mini, coming in at $1999. For this money, you'll get the eight core M1 Pro processor, 14 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. We've already talked about the insanity of options you get when you wanna customize your MacBook Pro 14, so we'll skip through that today. I'm not gonna waste your time talking about that for what, like the fifth time. Just to say that the Max version will run over $5,000, and with that, you'll get a 10 core M1 Max processor, 32 core GPU, 64 gigabytes of unified memory, and an eight terabyte solid state drive. That's still crazy for me to say out loud no matter how many times I say it and yes it shows that if raw power is the only thing you care about well again much like the laptop discussion from earlier get the MacBook Pro 14. Okay so let's start when we start digging into the comparisons let's start with that power because like I've said a couple of times in the past few weeks power for power's sake is great and all but do you really need all of that M1 Max power? Yes, it's an objective statement that any version of the MacBook Pro 14 will be more powerful than the Mac Mini. The M1 Pro is better in multi-core performance by a fair bit, and the M1 Max you could potentially get is far better in multi-core performance. Now that's great for things like video editing, having a lot of Chrome tabs open, and doing code rendering, but it's not the only metric that matters when it comes to a computer's you know, power. Like this isn't Goku. You don't just have like a power level of over 9,000 and then you're objectively better than Nappa, right? The M1 Standard, the M1 Pro, and the M1 Max all get roughly the same power in single core performance. So think most gaming, single applications, single tabs at a time, stuff like that. You won't see an appreciable difference between the two processors unless you do do a lot of things that take advantage of that multi-threaded workflow. And even then, unless you get the M1 Max, which will run you $28.99 at the bare minimum, the increase in performance just isn't that big of a differentiator to me. I personally think that the move from even the highest end Intel processors to the M1 standard was a far bigger jump than the M1 to the M1 Pro. Now I know that's not the most popular stance on the internet, but I'm gonna stick with it because I feel that those of us making computer-based videos, we have different needs than those watching the videos and triple, almost quadruple the price for about a 20% performance gain that seems pretty crazy to me. Thermal performance is another aspect of power that I think merits a quick conversation. This M1 Mac Mini will never make a sound. Heck, I've been using this for a year at this point, and if somebody were to come downstairs into my office and say, yeah, Apple actually never put fans in the chassis and it was all an elaborate joke at your expense, Gary, I'd 
probably believe you, but don't, don't do that. Don't come into my office to tell me that there has been elaborate jokes made about me. Because of the size of the computer itself, the active cooling system, and the absolute absurd cool running efficiency of the M1, I don't think it's possible to overheat this machine. In my experience, the M1 MacBook Pro 14 is very similar, but again, that's with me running the 8-core M1 Pro. I have seen reports online of folks hitting thermal caps with the M1 Max and the MacBook Pro 14, but it really only seems to be happening when running benchmarks or other extremely taxing workflows. And even then, it doesn't really seem to limit the power all that much unless you are just highest end pedal to the metal demanding activity. And if you are watching a video talking about a working from home computer, you probably won't ever actually hit that top end. So when it comes to thermal performance, the MacBook Pro 14 will be fine. You might hear the fans here. So I feel very comfortable saying that while the Mac mini will be the quieter of the two computers, neither would really have all that much of a problem thermally, which absolutely would be my biggest concern if I were looking at these two computers. Okay, the next part of the comparison is the physical construction of these two machines. Again, laptop, versus computer. The MacBook Pros from this year actually do a lot right when it comes to setting your laptop up for working from home. You get a dedicated HDMI port, you get Thunderbolt 4 as opposed to Thunderbolt 3, and if you happen to be a creator using hybrid cameras, that SD card slot is pretty clutch. You really could set this up with some standard accessories like a 4K monitor, keyboard, mice, etc without needing a dongle, without needing an adapter to make it work. And that's becoming rarer and rarer to say in the productivity computer realm. Folks just want small, thin, light, let's have all the adapters. I don't like that. I like being able to set up my computer without needing anything extra. And while that absolutely puts it head and shoulders above the MacBook Pro 13 and the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, even with the M1 standard processor, is still the most stacked computer in the Apple lineup for I.O. Here, you'll get two Thunderbolt 3 ports, two USB-A ports, either a gigabit or 10 gigabit Ethernet port, an HDMI port, headphone jack, it's just, it's so good. While yes, the MacBook Pro has the better Thunderbolt display support. At least on the Mac Mini, you can do one 6K display out from the Thunderbolt 3 and another 4K display from the HDMI. And much like the MacBook Pro 14, you can set up the Mac Mini without needing a single adapter. And it's even more so here because a ton of accessories will still use USB-A. Keyboard, mice, all sorts of peripherals are made to this day that need USB-A, and I really like that you get that on the back here, no questions asked. I also don't think that you can overlook that 10 gigabit upgrade if you are going to be doing any sort of local networking or super fast data transfer at your house. That might be more of a niche upgrade, but at least it's available for you on the Mac Mini, or I don't think it's available on any other Mac besides the other Minis and the Mac Pro if you buy the PCIe kind of plugin. That's pretty wild when you come to think about it, and if you want to use the Mac Mini like a server controller, that becomes pretty darn important too. One thing that you might not think about that really favors the MacBook is, do you live in an area prone to power outages? This never even entered my mind until recently when it seems like at least once every two weeks or so we lose power. Now we might not lose it for long periods of time, but we've absolutely been having some like grid hiccups or other things that just seem to like reset my house. From just like a standard computer point of view without spending money on an ups, the MacBook will be so much more useful in this case. It's been driving me crazy to be working on something and then all of a sudden the Mac Mini is useless because we lost power. At the very least, the MacBook will allow you to save progress from whatever you were working on before shutting the computer down and and then you get to deal with not having power in your house. Yes, you could buy an UPS to give you something very similar, but unless you buy a very expensive UPS, you'll only get maybe 30 minutes of life from the Mac Mini, where the MacBook Pro 14 gets 17 hours of battery life. That's a whole day of use working from a dark house, but this is probably the first comparison in this video where I would say that the extra price of the MacBook Pro 14 is absolutely worth it. And then if you spend a lowly absurd amount of money on a Ford F-150 with its built-in generator, you can still make and upload YouTube videos even during a storm where you lose power for eight hours at a time. Though it is absolutely cheaper just to drive to a coffee shop two towns over and get your work done there than to buy a new truck, but trucks are cool. And lastly, but not leastly, I wanna talk about the price. And not necessarily the price of the computer itself, we already mentioned that in the spec overview, but here I wanna talk more about the cost of ownership or the cost of setting one of these up for working from home or office use. The MacBook Pro, yes, it can be used just by itself without any other accessories, but I don't know that I would recommend that for long-term use. Hunching over a laptop, no matter how beautiful that display is and no matter how comfortable the keyboard is, it will absolutely hurt you over long periods of time. And I get it, all of the young folks watching are like, I'm invincible, I'm invulnerable, who cares about workplace injuries? 
your back cares and it will care more the older you get. So even this laptop will at minimum have a recommendation for me for a stand, a keyboard and a mouse, leading you to spend about 200 bucks to get it going. The Mac mini obviously needs more, but here you get a whole lot of options. For a display, if you want a 4K option to go with the 4K HDMI output, you are looking at roughly $350. I do prefer a bigger monitor, so I went with a 32 inch model for this comparison. You'll also need a keyboard and a mouse, and I love the Logitech MX Master lineup, and that adds about another 200 bucks on top of the monitor. So if you got that combined with the cheapest version of the mini, you are looking at roughly $1,139. That's still almost half the price of the MacBook Pro by itself and that's with my pretty high-end accessories you could choose much cheaper things to go with the mac mini and i bet you you could get that to under a thousand dollars no problem and i would say if you were doing any long-term work trips like a week or more at a time the mac mini is small enough to still be carried around and set up when needed i would have absolutely chosen the mac mini when i needed to work out of corporate housing for three months back in 2019 when i had a big work trip this is like the perfect quasi travel machine. But at the end of the day, so what, right? I actually think this is a closer video than I originally thought. When I first wanted to make the argument between these two, I was all ready to just give it to the MacBook because darn it, I love laptops. But in reality, unless you are getting the M1 Max processor, you aren't seeing that much of a power difference. And if you don't need 32 gigabytes or more of active memory, there is very little day-to-day -day usability differences between the two computers if you are strictly working from home. I think I'd probably have to give the nod to the Mac Mini for that use because of how well it interfaces with everything and it doesn't need a single adapter to do so. Plus that 10 gigabit is pretty clutch. The MacBook is certainly not bad and has some real advantages in having a built-in battery and you know, being a laptop if you do need the versatility that that provides. Personally, I'd go with the MacBook because I'm always going in and out of my house, but if you don't, I'd absolutely recommend the Mac Mini. I use this for the past year without a single issue, and it's just one of the best standalone computers ever made. And if you like this video and you would like to see a little bit more on why you should buy the 14-inch MacBook Pro, here's a link to my video talking about all of my favorite reasons to buy, and you can find it by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.